Hi everybody, welcome back to reInvent 2022. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage. We're here at the satellite set. It's up on the fifth floor of the Venetian Conference Center. And this is part of the global startup program, the AWS Startup Showcase Series that we've been running all through last year and, and into this year with AWS and featuring some of its, its global partners. Ed Walsh is here, he's the CEO of Chaos Search, many time CUBE alum, and Kevin Miller, who's also a CUBE alum, Vice President and GM of S3 at AWS. Guys, good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you, Dave. Like Kevin, this is, we call this our Super Bowl, so this must be like your, I don't know, uh, World Cup. It's a pretty you know? big event, yeah. It was a, it was, it's the World Cup for sure. Yeah, so a lot of S3 talk. You know, I mean, that's what got us, got us all started in 2006, so Absolutely. What, what's new in S3? Yeah, it's been a great show. We've had a number of really interesting launches over the last few weeks, and, and a few at the show as well. So, you know, we've been really focused on helping customers that are running mass scale data lakes, including, you know, whether it's structured or unstructured data. Uh, we actually announced just a few, uh, just an hour ago, I think it was, uh, a, a new capability to give customers uh, cross-account access points for sharing data securely with other parts of the organization. And that's something that we'd heard from customers is as they are growing and have more uh, data sets and they're looking to, to get more out of their data, they are increasingly looking to, to enable multiple teams across their businesses to, to access those data sets securely. And that's what we provide with cross-account access points. We also launched uh, yesterday our multi-region uh, access point failover capabilities. And so again, this is where customers have data sets and they're using multiple regions for certain critical workloads. They're now able to, to use that to fail, uh, to control the failover between different regions in AWS. And then one other launch I would just highlight is some improvements we made to Storage Lens, uh, which is our really a, a, a very novel and unique capability to help customers really understand what storage they have, where, who's accessing it, when it's being accessed, and we added a bunch of new metrics. Storage Lens has been pretty exciting for a lot of customers. In fact, we, we looked at the data and saw that Customers who have adopted Storage Lens, typically within six months, they saved more than six times what they had invested in turning Storage Lens on. And certainly in, in this environment right now, we have a lot of customers who are, it's pretty top of mind. They're, they're looking for ways to optimize their, their costs in the cloud and take some of those savings and be able to reinvest them in new innovation. So pretty exciting with the Storage Lens launch. I think what's well. interesting about S3 is that, you know, pre-cloud object store was this kind of a, a niche Right, and then of course you guys announced you know, S3 in 2006 as I said, and okay, great, you know, cheap and deep storage, simple, get put. Now the conversation's about how to enable value from, from data, Absolutely. analytics, and it's just a whole new world, and Ed, you've talked many times, I sure. love the term, you know, we, we built chaos search on the, on, on the shoulders of giants, right, and so the, the under, you know, yep. underlying that is S3, but the yep. value that you can build on top of that has been key. And I don't think we've talked about shoulders of giants, but we've talked about how we literally, you know, we have a big vision, right? So hard to kind of solve the challenge of analytics at scale. We really focus on the, you know, the you know, big data coming in the environment and getting analytics. So we talk about the, on the shoulders of giants, obviously Isaac Newton's you know, metaphor of, I learned from everything before and we layer on top. So literally when you talk about all the things come from S3, like I just smile because like we pick it up naturally. That's right. We went all in on S3 and this is where I think you're going, Dave. But everyone is, so let's just cut the chase. Like, so any of the data platforms are using S3 because what you're building, but we, we did it a little bit differently. So at first people using it cold storage, like you said, and then the ETL it up into a different platforms for analytics of different sorts. Now people are using it closer, they're doing caching layers and they're caching out, and they're, that's where, but that's where the attributes of a scale or reliability are. What we did is we actually make S3 a database. So literally, we have no persistence outside S3, and that kind of comes in. So, it's working really well with clients because most of the thing is we pick up all these attributes of scale reliability and it, and it shows up in the client's environments. And so w when you launch all these new scalable things, we just see it. Like our clients constantly comment, uh, like one of our biggest customers, FinTech in uh, Europe, they go to Black Friday. Again, Black Friday's not one day. It's, and they little yeah. scale from, what is it, 58 terabytes a day and they're going up to 187 terabytes a day and we don't flinch and they say, how do you do that? Well, we built our platform on S3 as long as it can stream into S3. So they're saying, I can't overrun S3 and it's a natural play. So it's, it's really nice, that, but we pick up those attributes. But same thing, that's why we're able to you know, help clients get you know, really, you know, Equifax is a good example maybe. Um, they're able to consolidate 12 divisions on one platform. We couldn't have done that without the scale and the performance of what we can get at S3. But also they saved 90%. I'm able to do that, but that's really because the only persistence is S3 and what you guys are delivering. But, and then we really focus on 
shoulders giants. We're doing on top of that, innovating on top of your platforms and bringing that out. So things like, you know, we have a unique data representation that makes it easy to ingest this data because it's kind of coming at you four Vs of big data. We allow you to do that, make it performant on S3. So now you're doing hot analytics on S3 as if it's just a native database in memory, but there's no memory or SSC caching. And then multi-model, once you get it there, don't move it, leverage it in place. So, you know, Elasticsearch access, you know, Kibana, Grafana access, or SQL access with your tools. So we're seeing that constantly, but we always talk about on the shoulders of giants, but it's even this week, I get comments from our customers like, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. And most of it is because we built on top of what you guys provided. So it's really working out pretty well. And you uh, know, we talk a lot about digital transformation, of course. We had uh, the pleasure of sitting down with uh, Adam Solipsky prior, John Furrier, flew to Seattle, sits down, yeah. does an annual one-on-one -on -one with the AWS CEO, which is kind of cool. Great right and, up. And yeah, it. It was, it's good. It's like study for the test, you know? And, <laughs> and, uh, and so, but, but one of the interesting things he said was, you know, we're, one of our challenges going forward is, is uh, how do we go beyond digital transformation into business transformation? Absolutely. Like, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. I was talking to a customer today, AWS customer and obviously others, because they're a hundred year old company. Mm -hmm. And they're basically, their business was, they, I call them like the Uber for, for servicing appliances. When your appliance breaks, you got to mm -hmm. get a, a person to serve it. Yeah. Service, if it's out of warranty, you, yeah. you know, these guys do that. So they got to basically have a, you know, a network of technicians yeah. and they got to deal with the customers, no phone. Right, so they had a completely, you know, tra that was a business transformation, right? Absolutely. They're becoming, you know, everybody says they're becoming a software company, but they're building it, of course, yeah. right. on the cloud. So, right. wonder if you guys could each talk about what's, what you're seeing in terms mm -hmm. of changing, not only in the sort of IT and the digital transformation, but also the business transformation. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree that I think business transformation is probably the, one of the top themes I'm hearing from customers of all sizes right now. Even in this environment, I think customers are looking for what can I do to drive top line or, you know, improve bottom line or just yep. improve my customer experience and really you know uh, sort of have that effect where I'm, in, I'm helping customers get more done and uh, you know it, it is it is very tricky because to do that successfully the customers that are doing that successfully I think are really getting into the lines of businesses and figuring out you know it's a, probably a different skill set possibly a different culture different norms and practices and process and so it's it's a lot more than just a tech like you said a lot more than just the technology involved yeah. but when it you know where you sort of liquidate it down into the data, that's where absolutely we see that as a critical function for lines of businesses to become more comfortable, first off, knowing what data sets they have, what data they, they, they could access but possibly aren't today, and then starting to tap into those data sources, and then as, it, as that progresses, figuring out how to share and collaborate with data sets across a company to, you know, to uh, cro correlate across those data sets and, and derive more insights. And then as all of that's being done, of course, there, it's important to measure the results and be able to really see is this, what, what effect is this having? And proving that effect. And certainly I've seen plenty of customers be able to show you know, this is a percentage increase in top or bottom line. And uh, so that pattern is playing out a lot and actually a lot of how we think about where we're going with S3 is related to how do we make it easier for customers to, uh, to do everything that I just described, mm -hmm. to, have, to understand what data they have, uh, to make it accessible. And you know, it's great to have such a great ecosystem of partners that are then building on top of that and innovating to help customers connect really directly with the businesses that they're running and driving those insights. Well, and customers are challenged today. Right? One of the things I love that Adam said, he said we're, Amazon is strategically very, very patient, mm -hmm. but tactically we're really impatient. And you got customers <laughs> out there like, yep. how are you going to help me increase revenue? How are you going to help me cut cost? Yep. Right? We were talking about how off, off camera, how you know, software can actually help do that. Yeah, it's deflationary, I love the quote, right? So yeah. software's deflationary. As costs come up, how do you go drive it? Also free up the team. And you nail it, it's like, okay, everyone wants to save money, but they're not putting off these projects. In fact, the digital transformation or the business, it's actually moving forward, but they're getting a little bit bigger. But everyone's looking for creative ways to look at the architecture, and it becomes larger, larger. We talked about a couple of those examples, but like even like uh, things like observability, they want to give this tool set, this data, to all their developers, all their SREs, same data to all the security team. And then to do that, they need to find a way in architecture to do that scale and save money simultaneously. So we see constantly people are pairing us up with some of these larger firms like, uh, or like, keep your data dog, keep your Splunk, use us to reduce the cost. That one-on-one -on -one is actually cheaper than what you have, but then they use it either to save money, we're saving 50 to 80% hard dollars, but more importantly, to free up your team from the toil, and then they, they turn around and make that 
um, budget neutral and then allowed to get the same tools to more people across the org. Because they're sometimes constrained of getting that access to everyone. Explain that a little bit more. Let's say sure. I got a Splunk or, or Datadog okay. and I'm, I'm sifting through you know, logs. How, how, how exactly do you help? So it's pretty simple. I'll use Datadog example. Um, so let's say using Datadog for observability. So it's just your developers, your SREs managing the environment. Um, all these platforms are really good at being a monitoring alerting type of tool. What they're not necessarily great at is keeping the data for longer periods, like the log data, bigger data. That's where we're strong. What you see is like a Datadog. Um, let's say you're using it for administrator for, to keep 30 days of logs, which is not enough. Like let's say you're running environment, you're finding that performance issue. You kind of want to look to last quarter end, last month end, or maybe last Black Friday. So 30 days is not enough, but they'll charge you $2.80, $2.80 a gigabyte. Don't focus on it, it's just two eighty. And then if you just turn the knob and keep seven days, but keep two years of data on us, which is on S3, it goes down to 22 cents, plus our list price of 80 cents, goes to the, a dollar two compared to 280. So here's the thing, what they're able to do is just turn a knob, get more data, we do an integration, so you can go right from Datadog or Grafana directly into our platform so the user doesn't see it, but they save money. A lot of times they don't just save the money, now they use that to go fund and get Datadog to a lot more people. Make sense? Uh, so, it's a creativity, they're looking at it, and they're looking at tools. We see the same thing with uh, Grafana. Um, if you look at the whole Grafana play, which is, hey, you can't put it in one place, but put uh, Prometheus for metrics or traces. We fit well with logs, but they're using that to bring down their costs because a lot of this data just really bogs down these applications. The alerting, monitoring are good at small data, they're not good at the big data, which is what we're really good at. And then the, the one in one is actually less than you paid for the one. So it, and it works pretty well. So things are really unpredictable right now in the economy. You know, during the pandemic, we were sort of locked down and, and the stock market went crazy. We're like, okay, <laughs> it's going to end, it's going to end. And then it, it looked like it was going to end and then it, you know, but last year it reinvented. It was yeah. just, just in that sweet spot before yeah. Omicron. Yeah, so we, we yeah. tucked it in, which, which was awesome, right? It was a great, great event. We really, really missed one physical reinvent, you know, yeah. which was very rare. So that's cool, but I've called it the slingshot economy. It feels like you know, you're know you driving down the highway and you got to hit the brakes and then all of a yep. sudden you're going, okay, we're through it. Oh yep. no, you got to hit the brakes again. Yeah. So it's very, very hard to predict. And I was listening to Jassy this morning. He was talking about, yeah, consumers, they're still spending, but what they're doing is they're, they're shopping for more features. They might be you know, buying a TV that's less expensive, you know, more value for the money. Mm -hmm. So okay, so hopefully the consumer spending will get us out of this, but we don't really know. You know, and I don't know, yeah. you know, we don't seem to have the algorithms, we've never been through something like this before. So what are you guys seeing in terms of customer behavior given that uncertainty? Well, I, one thing I would highlight that I think, particularly going back to what we were just talking about as far as business and digital transformation, I think some customers are still appreciating the fact that where you know yesterday you may have had to, to buy some capital, put out some capital, and commit to something for a, a large upfront expenditure, is that you know today, it, the, the value of being able to experiment and scale up, and then most importantly scale down, and dynamically based on, is the experiment working out? Am I seeing real value from it? And doing that on a time scale of a day, or a week, or a few months, that is so important right now, because again, it gets to, I am looking for ways to innovate and to drive top line growth, but I, I can't commit to a multi-year sort of uh, a set of costs to to do that. So, and, and I think plenty of customers are finding that even a few months of experimentation gives them some really valuable insight as far as is this going to be successful or not. And so, I think that again, just of course with S3 and storage from day one, we've been elastic. Pay for what you use. If you're not using the storage, you don't get charged for it. And I think that particularly right now. Um, having the applications and the rest of the ecosystem around the storage and the data be able to scale up and scale down is, is just ever more important. And yeah. when people see that, like typically they're looking to do more with it. So if they find, you usually find these little department projects, but they see a way to actually move faster and save money. I, I think it is a mix of those two. They're looking to expand it, which can be a nightmare for sales cycles because they take longer. But people are looking, well, why don't you leverage this and go across divisions? So mm -hmm. we do see people trying to leverage it because they're still, I don't think digital transformation is slowing down but a lot more, to be honest, a lot more approvals at this point for everything. A lot more focus yeah. on I mean, the cost and performance. It is, You know, right? uh, Adam had another great quote in his, in his keynote. He said, if, if you want to save money, the cloud's a place to do it. Absolutely. And, and, and I read an article recently, and I was looking through it, and I said, this is the first time you know, AWS has ever seen a downturn because the cloud was too early back then. I'm like, you weren't paying attention in 2008 because that was the first yep. major inflection point mm -hmm. for cloud adoption where CFO said, okay, stop the CapEx, 
we're, we're going to OpEx mm -hmm. and you saw the cloud take off. And then 2010 started this you know, amazing cycle that you know, we really haven't seen anything like it where they were yeah. doubling down in investments and they were real mm -hmm. hardcore investment. It wasn't like 1998, 99, where yep. it was like all just going out the door for no clear reason. Yeah. So that foundation is now in place and it, I think it makes a lot of sense and it could be here for, for a while yep. where people are saying, hey, I want to optimize and I'm going to do that on the cloud. Yeah, no, I mean, I've, uh, obviously I certainly agree with Adam's quote. I think really that's been in AWS's DNA from, from day one, right, is yep. that ability to you know, scale costs with, with the actual consumption and, and paying for what you use. And I think that, you know, certainly moments like now are ones that can really motivate change in an organization in a way that might not have been as palatable when it just, it didn't feel like it was as necessary. Yeah. So. All right, Ed, we got to go, give you a last word. Uh, I think it's been a great event. I love all your announcements. I think oh. it's wonderful. Uh, it's been a great show. I love, uh, in fact, how many people are here at reInvent? Uh, north of 50,000. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was, it's as big if not bigger than 2019. People have said, eh, 2019 was a record when you count out all the, I don't know, it feels, it feels as big if not bigger, so. Yeah, there's great energy. energy. Yeah, yeah, it's, agree, it's sure. quite amazing, and, uh, and we're thrilled to be part of it. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE yeah, again. Dave. Really appreciate thank it, great to be face to face. Thanks, All right, Dave. and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. We'll be right back.